Hi friends and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how to handle working with those people that are just quite frankly difficult and make life difficult for the rest of us. So this video is really for you if you are a brand new nursing student getting ready to start school, head into clinicals. This video is for you if you are a seasoned nursing student and you've already been living this life. This video is for you if you're currently a new grad working out in the healthcare setting. This video is for you if you're not a new grad and you're working in any healthcare setting or even if you're not a nurse because at the end of the day, we all have jobs where we've had to work with those difficult people that can make life truly a living hell for the rest of us but there are things that we can do. It is a serious topic. So let's get, get going. We'll move right on through things so that hopefully if you find yourself in this type of situation, you know at the end of the day that there are things you can do and that you don't have to sit there and take this kind of unprofessional behavior from anybody. So nurse bullying, um, we also know that as eating our young, we consider it ingrained in the culture, a rite of passage or an unavoidable fact of a nurse's life. But no matter how we explain away, nurse bullying takes a heavy toll. To name a thing is to take its power away. Bullying is a targeted, destructive behavior that must be called what it is in order to address and eliminate in one of the most carry, caring professions. Really sadly, with those statistics, over 50% of student nurses have all reported that they have witnessed and or experienced nurses being bullied or they themselves were bullied while out in the clinical setting. Couple that with the statistic that over 60% of nurses will leave their job in the first year due to the behavior of their coworkers. That is just sad and pathetic. When we are nurses, we are professionals, we are educated people, and we're there ultimately to take care of others and to serve our patients. Um, quite frankly, bullying and those types of behaviors just don't have their place in a healthcare setting, in an educational setting, you name it, they just don't have a, a place there. So we need to really focus on how we can improve our response to those behaviors and shooing out these people that are just difficult. That being said, when we're talking about this type of subject, it is not just nurse to nurse that we experience this. If you work anywhere in healthcare, you are working with patients, patients' families, providers, um, members of the ancillary care team. There are so many relationships and interactions happening on a day-to-day -day basis, both inpatient, outpatient, all realms of healthcare. So chances are you will experience this even if you don't have a job that's physically at the patient's bedside. Okay, and last thing I wanna address before we go any farther. If you are watching this video and thinking this is such a stupid topic, why would somebody even make a video on this? I guarantee that you're the person, the difficult person that I'm talking about. So I hope you sit and watch this video and you can garner something and really walk away with more professionalism at the end of the day. All right, let's talk about things. If you are working as a nurse and you have that feeling there's that person that is constantly making you uncomfortable with their side comments, their judgmental tone, um, it's a repetitive thing, I want you to remember it probably really truly is not you. They probably just don't like themselves and in some way they're threatened by you, whether it's your age, your experience, your appearance, you know, people will hate just to hate. That does not mean that you have to sit there and tolerate that behavior. So I would highly encourage you in a very professional manner to take um, very conscientious notes of those interactions, what's happening, um, be very descriptive with dates, keep a running written record because someday you might need that. Next, I would encourage you to truly have um, the courage, and I know this can be really difficult, but dig deep and don't be afraid to stand up for yourself. Um, let somebody know the, the tone, the side comments are unnecessary because often if you um, kind of hit that head on or acknowledge that right away, it can further squash things. If that behavior continues and you've done those steps, it really is time to put on your brave face and you need to go talk to your manager or your supervisor because you have a right to be working in, a, in an environment, no matter what that environment is, and it should be a safe space where you are free from judgment, comments, um, the negativity, you know, people gossiping about you, gossiping about coworkers. So as hard as it is sometimes, we really truly have to be the, the person that's gonna be brave enough 
to put a stop to it by going to our supervisor, our manager, and having that conversation. That's gonna be a very confidential conversation, and this would be a really great time where if you do have a list of those events that have been happening, if you've been taking notes, it'd be a great time to reference that and bring it with you so they know that you mean business and you're not kidding around. Like You have been documenting um, this patterned behavior. The unfortunate thing about working with these difficult people, we'll call them, you can call them whatever you want, um, but at the end of the day, they often lack emotional intelligence. They're not even, well, they're aware, but they're truly not aware of how off-putting they are to other people. It just takes that one bad apple to spoil the bunch. So that's why I highly, highly encourage you to be the voice that will go and make a formal complaint. Most of us don't wanna be troublemakers and I, I think we often tend to feel like if we say something, we're opening up a can of worms. No, you're not the troublemaker. So please don't think that about yourself. You have to just like squash that idea in your mind and be brave. The next thing that I would encourage you to think about and remember in these interactions, um, if it is a one-time isolated incident, while it doesn't make it okay, for you to be anybody's doormat. Sometimes you have to put yourself into the context of what was happening with that person that day. Did they honestly and truly just have a bad day? Because I don't know about you, but I know I do. I do have bad days where maybe my tone was off, maybe um, I just had other things that were preoccupying my mind and my thoughts. So I do also encourage you to give people the measure of grace and one time, one isolated incident might have just been a truly a bad day. Let's talk about a couple very real things that somebody might be going through that you just have no idea. Maybe that nurse just had to put a toe tag on a patient that they loved dearly and they were very close to. Maybe that nurse just had to place a, a baby in a body bag and zip it up for the last time. Maybe that nurse had to watch a loved one um, who couldn't make it on time. They were FaceTiming with the patient wanting to be there in the last moments of their life and unfortunately missed that opportunity to say their goodbye. Maybe it's a doctor who just had to deliver the very worst news and diagnosis to a family and he himself just feels devastated knowing he's not able to cure a disease that's unfortunately untreatable. Maybe it's that nurse who woke up this morning and unfortunately had a miscarriage and lost her baby that you know nothing about. There's so many things that could be going on in somebody's personal life and mind so again, give people a measure of grace and just remember that we all have bad days. The best nurses still have bad days. It doesn't always mean that they're bad people. Some other ways that we can combat this incivility, stay humble. Um, you don't have to be an aggressor. It actually sometimes frustrates them more when you do stay cool and keep your calm because they can never accuse you of stooping to their level and that's what they want. Don't give that to them. So remember, we talked about that emotional maturity, continue to show and to grow that emotional maturity. If you are the new grad and you're experiencing these behaviors, I want you to remember that you're not alone and most of us, sadly, as a rite of passage, have all been in your shoes. But what I would encourage everybody to do and kindly ask you to do to make our little corner of the nursing world a better place, when you see that happening, call people out on it. Stand up for the person who is being treated um, unkindly and unjustly, take them under your wing. That's how we continue to grow our profession. That's how we help to retain nurses. We don't shoo them away. Send in the life raft, help them out, because that's what you would want. Nothing feels worse than when you feel like the lone person on the island. Last thing I would encourage you to do is be authentic. Hold true to the values that you hold dear to yourself, um, your integrity, what you know that you bring to the table as a nurse or whoever you are, whatever you're working, whether you're a student, new grad, we all have those things that we can do and we bring. And don't let who you are cave in the face of, some, of working with somebody who is difficult, no matter how difficult they may be. So to sum this up, remember the core values of Nurse Lizzie. Be helpful, be excited, be authentic, be respectful, and don't forget about teamwork. Healthcare is all about collaboration. It truly takes a village to take care of our patients. So be the type of person that we all want working on our team.